So I am Anthony Vasquez. Welcome everyone for being here today. I am a communication specialist with Mobility. And today we want to talk to you about John Slayton Access U 2022, our first hybrid iteration of Access U. And it is a training conference that we've been doing now since 2004 out of Austin, Texas. And now it'll be out of Austin, Texas and everywhere in the world online. Uh, today, we're going to be hearing from Sharon Rush, our executive director, Jessica J. McKay, our director of community programs, Elizabeth Boyd, our director of development, and Mariela Paulino, our director of marketing. And at the end of our short presentation, we'll have room for any questions and we'll give you some answers. So why don't we start with Sharon? You can tell us a bit about Nobility, about Access Use specifically happening, happening again in less than a month. May 10th to the 12th with a pre-conference on the 9th. Uh, so yeah, Sharon, why don't you take it away? I'm happy to. Thank you, Anthony, for that great introduction. And, and thank you, Larry, for being here. I appreciate your interest and in, um, in your interest in disability issues generally, and especially in your interest in nobility and the work that we do. I'm Sharon Rush. I'm the executive director and co-founder of Nobility. Um, we're a fairly small nonprofit organization. We like to say we're small but mighty. We're based in Austin, Texas, but we serve a, a global constituency. People with disabilities are all over the world in all walks of life. Um, we started Nobility in 1999 after two years of operating as a loose uh, community collaboration around the issue of technology access for people with disabilities. As you probably know in the late 90s, early 2000s, Austin was trying to remake itself as a technology hub. And my job at that time was working for a, a disability rehabilitation organization, looking for employment opportunities for people with disabilities. And of course, for me, I just thought, well, technology is a perfect opportunity. It's flexible. It, it meets the needs of people with disabilities very nicely. And so as I started to actually explore those options, I kept encountering these barriers, the barriers inherent in the design of the technology, not in the skills of the people who I was trying to find jobs for. So we, I started talking to other people in, in Austin about why do these barriers exist? And I, I was speaking to people in academia, in industry, in civic engagement. We had some initiatives around what they called the digital divide, but unfortunately the digital divide didn't seem to extend at that time to people with disabilities. They were mostly thinking of low income and um, cultural differences, but they weren't really considering disability. And as, as I spoke to these people in these different um, trajectories of involvement with technology and disability, I learned more and more about these inherent barriers and thought, well, how do we engage the tech sector itself in, in fixing these and bringing down these barriers? And we, we, we kind of settled on the idea that let's find something competitive. And that was our Accessibility Internet Rally, which is basically a hackathon, although I don't think anybody used the word hackathon at that time, engaging the tech sector to learn about accessibility, use their design skills to design an accessible website for a nonprofit organization, and then compete for prizes. And what we found was that that kind of engagement was really, um, it was a very positive kind of engagement rather than threatening with lawsuits or anything by, by encouraging people to compete and show off their accessible design skills, they were engaged in our issue in a very creative and positive way. And so after doing that as a community collaboration for a couple of years, we decided this was an issue that really had enough substance that it needed an organization to shelter that contest and to grow the programs. So we founded it in 99, in about 2004, people were asking for the training that they got through AIR as a separate, you know, can we just get the training outside of the competition? And so we decided we'd start this training institute once a year. And as it's, as it's rolled out over the years, 
we actually do a lot of training at different times throughout the year, webinars and, and private companies will hire us to come and do trainings. But Access U, this training institute that we started at that time was, is really the time where we bring the community together, train people on all kinds of skills related to accessibility in different tracks. You know, people who are project managers, designers, developers, um, we have a, a game and um, artificial intelligence IA XR uh, track this year. I think we've had it maybe uh, for a couple of years now, but trying to really incorporate emerging technology into it too. And what we found about XSU is that it's really a, um, a time for the community to come together in that spirit of creative inclusion and uh, design interest in design and good design. And, and uh, John Slayton, for whom the, the conference is named, it was a blind professor of English at the University of Texas. And he used to sign his emails, good design is accessible design. And I think we found that to be true through the years that, you know, just like in the physical world, when you make accessibility accommodations for people with disabilities, it's not only people with disabilities who use those accommodations, right? It makes it easier for the whole, for everybody in the world. So um, before I, I um, turn things back over to Anthony, I did want to mention that as we grew through the years, we developed a number of other programs and projects. One of them is a, a K-12 support for teachers and parents of kids with disabilities in K-12 schools, helping them to understand how to most effectively use technology in the classroom to include kids with disabilities. We've built an online learning center, which we're going to get a real, we're going to get a real workout for the, our online learning center this year at Access U because we've designed it in a way that I think Jay's going to talk about more where we're offering a lot of asynchronous classes as well as the in-person live sessions. And, uh, and of course, you know, we do a lot of just general consulting with companies, helping them figure out, is my website accessible? What do I need to do to make it accessible? We've got just-in-time help desk um, offerings, usability testings, things that pe where people can hire us. And so in that sense, as a mission-driven organization, having fee-for-service offerings that that do our mission and meet our mission goals in the marketplace has also been a really good thing for our financial and fiscal health. Um, so that's that's about, I think, probably more than Anthony wanted me to say. <laughs> I get to talking about this and I don't stop. So I will... Uh, I guess, Anthony, questions are going to be at the end, right? So Sure, and we can take them I'm, either like spoken or in chat. But yeah, let's just um, hear a little so bit about... Yeah, back we'll to you. Back to me. Thank you. And so, yeah, in the spring of 2020, like most organizations, we were faced with what to do in the mid of this pandemic and how do we make access you still happen? And I remember I was, I was you know, on staff in March and we, we began to pivot to, to, to make this experience still happen. Um, and in eight weeks, we went from what are we gonna do to we have Access U 2020. And uh, we did that for two years. Now we are bringing back the in-person component that we all miss, but we're keeping it also virtual, the first hybrid Access U. And for that, I want to, uh, maybe Jake could just share a few of the highlights of what we have planned and why this is such an important issue right now, the hybrid model and asynchronous and keeping people engaged no matter where they are in the world and no matter whether they're disabled or not. So Jay, why don't you just uh, share for a bit? Sure. So um, we did intentionally uh, want to make sure that Access U this year was a hybrid event. So that way we could um, accommodate our, our on-site attendees because we know, um, you know, some people that's just the best way for them to learn is to be on site, to, to have that face-to-face, -to, -face, to have that uh, more physical, you know, kind of interaction uh, and opportunity. But then at the same time, we also wanted to recognize um, our community that would not be able to travel either because of cost, because of health reasons, um, or for some of us, 
you know, when, when we had to go to virtual, some of us found that that was a really good way for us to engage with, you know, different conferences and training. So we really wanted to show um, how important both of those avenues are. Uh, so we wanted to respect that and, and help make sure that that access to you meets those needs. So it will be a hybrid event. Um, and we do recognize that some of our attendees coming to Austin have not maybe been in person uh, for a few years. And, you know, we've had lots of people ask questions about, you know, how safe is it going to be? What kind of uh, procedures are going to be in place? And so our COVID policies um, are a little bit of, you know, CDC recommendations in addition to um, the requirements from St. Edwards University, which is where uh, Access U uh, will be at this year. So our policies will include, of course, you know, proof of vaccination or a negative test. Um, we will be asking attendees to wear their masks throughout the conference spaces, uh, as well as fill out a daily symptom checker. So, you know, that's just just a few of the things that we'll have in place for them. Uh, we also have some other things, you know, we'll have extra masks available, um, you know, sanitizing stations, of course, providing as much space for seating and outdoor eating areas and things like that too. So we just wanna make sure everybody feels comfortable, feels safe um, as they come back for those that are able to come back face to face. Um, as Sharon mentioned before, one of the other things that we're doing this year is introducing a new format to access you, which is some asynchronous sessions. So one of the things when we were talking about um, having virtual participation was, you know, a lot of times for those that don't prefer virtual or that do, but it can just be exhausting to be in front of your computer, you know, for several hours in a day and then, you know, times that by three days. Um, you know, it's just kind of after a while, you're just getting burnt out, Zoom fatigue. So we wanted to explore the option of asynchronous sessions. So we have several of our sessions that will be pre-recorded, uh, but we know that one of the other key components of Access U is the ability for our attendees to interact with the presenters, with the experts in the field, um, you know, for, for that exchange of ideas and knowledge and, and getting time to ask questions and, and explore some other options. So with our pre-recorded sessions, we've also scheduled live Q&As. So that way it's not just, a, oh, there's videos in there, maybe I'll watch them, maybe I won't. Um, it, it provides that other element of engagement and, and opportunity for our um, participants to interact with each other. So we're really excited to see um, that come into play this year. Uh, we have several keynotes this year because really when we're looking at um, you know, our theme of digital inclusion is the new normal. Uh, we saw some opportunities to talk to some people from very different perspectives uh, and ideas. And so, um, you know, we have Molly E. Holschlag, you know, author, pioneer in web accessibility, open standards. We'll be talking about refining uh, accessibility in the World Wide Web. We have Christina Mallon, director of inclusive design at Microsoft, talking about inclusive design as better design. We had Katarina Rivera, excuse me, Rivera, who is the founder of Blindish Latina and talking about the future of work must prioritize disability inclusion. We have Kelsey Ruger, vice president of product at Hello Alice with accessibility for small business. And then we have Kemi Emmy Essie, who is a disabled therapist and visual artist talking about the art of perseverance. So really just uh, a wide range of perspectives uh, in terms of, you know, disability inclusion or disability inclusion design and web accessibility standards. So we're really excited about all of those. Uh, in addition to all of these wonderful opportunities for learning and sharing, um, you know, what, what's better at a conference than those opportunities to um, connect and to network and to share additional experiences. So we did make sure to add some of those, um, you know, fun social interaction components. So uh, in addition to having, um, of course, you know, some on-site uh, events, we wanted to also have some virtual events. So we have uh, one of our receptions, we're actually going to have a, uh, a trivia night, but it will actually include not only our on-site attendees, but it will be able to include our virtual attendees as well. So maybe we can do a, a on-site versus online. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but also we're looking at having an access accessible escape room on-site. Um, but then also uh, we have um, one of our community members is providing an old time radio show night that will be virtual. So uh, just again, really looking at some, some new opportunities and, and ways to explore inclusion. Oh 
right. Well, thank you for that, Jay. Is there anything else you'd like to add briefly, or should we move on to hear a bit about like our nonprofit history and development goals from Elizabeth? Um, so I think okay. that the um, the unique nature of Nobility being one of the few organizations in the nonprofit sector to be doing the work that we do makes it um, our work stand out in the space um, and, and allows us to sort of answer these really big problems with real solutions. And so we strive to intentionally design all of our programming, including Access U, um, to be inclusive and accessible, uh, but also consider the diverse needs of our served communities. And so hybrid events um, really allow us to take into consideration what that landscape looks like um, and also really address the fact that in-person events have innate barriers. And so it's really exciting for us in our inclusive work to be able to talk about or to reach all sorts of populations that may not necessarily be able to travel for whatever reason. Um, so in our work, um, specifically within nonprofit, the nonprofit scope, we're working within community programs. So Access U is just one part of that. Sharon touched on this, Air being sort of our baby um, that really created the nobility. Um, and then also addressing assistive technology needs in the K in K-12 classrooms. Um, and then we also have monthly workshops um, where we uh, are talking about assistive technology with um, educators, students, teachers, support staff. Um, and then equally, we just launched a Be a Digital Ally series that addresses all sorts of uh, really basic accessibility um, design issues, mostly for content creators, but it's open to everyone. Um, and we welcome anyone to, to come and participate. Um, but all of these programs are only available because of our donors and our corporate partners. Um, and so it's important that we sort of sit in the space that we recognize that because of the generosity of the people that support us, we're able to do our critical work in digital e equity. Um, and when we think about when technology, whether that's websites or mobile apps or emerging tech like VR and AI, all of that has to be accessible. And I like to think that accessible design is complete design. So when we're not writing and building technology that does not consider the needs of everyone, then that simply is incomplete. Um, and so it's really cool that we get to be part of something where we're able to make complete design. Um, and then started to touch on one minor point with, um, with hybrid events specifically, uh, they do tend to come at a greater expense. So I'm just going to list off because this is my job as director of development, how grateful we are to our XSU 2022 sponsors. Um, so in, in loving order, um, it's Google, Fable, Pearson, Oklahoma, Able Tech, Code Mantra, Nelnet, IRA, WebAIM, International Association of Accessibility Professionals, Better Leave, Monkey Boy, and ICT Accessibility Testing Symposium. Uh, so I think that I've covered everybody. <laughs> uh, so back to you, Anthony. It's a good problem to have. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All righty. Well, thank you, Elizabeth. And um, yeah, that's just a kind of top level overview of the conference and the organization. And again, that's May 10th to 12th with a pre-conference on May 9th. The kickoff reception really is going to be with Molly E. Hoschlag on May 9th, right? I think at 5 Central. Or is it 6 Central? 5 Central, I believe. Um, yeah, so I know that Lawrence said he was in a loud place uh you can feel free to send us a question through the chat or um based on what you've seen and heard today you can just email us uh we're gonna you know sharon and jay and elizabeth and mariella will be available to answer any questions and actually mariella if there's anything else you'd want to add about ways to you know know more about us or spread the word of the conference Go before the, before we yeah. turn it over to mariella can yeah, i say yeah. a couple of things about our keynote speakers because i think we have a really um spectacular lineup of sure. keynotes this year and and i think if i was a journalist 
one of the stories that to me is most interesting is the one about Molly. Molly Holschlag was a pioneer of the internet. I mean, she was one of the many, many women in tech now say they would not have had a career. They wouldn't have even thought to pursue it if it hadn't been for Molly. She, uh, she's written, I think, 30 or 35 books, but she's been very, very ill for the last about six years, I think. And she was unable to work. They weren't even certain that she would survive. I think she had, I'm not sure of the details of her illness, but it was an immune system or blood disease. And, um, and so she was unable to work for that time. And this is her first time back in public since her illness. She's um, gone back to school. She's getting a PhD. She's writing a book another book, this would be, I guess, number 36. And now she's, she's always been a strong advocate of web standards, but now she's talking about accessibility with this renewed passion of someone who has, has experienced the need herself. So she's very much of an intellectual, she's a philosopher, she's a moral philosopher, and she always was aligned with accessibility as a, as a, principle, you know, we want to include everyone. Her vision of the internet was that we include everyone. But um, having had a disability experience herself personally, she has this insight that she says she never could have had without the experience that she's had over the last several years. And so I just think in terms of writing a story, I think that would be one of the stories that would be of really strong interest for me. And then of course, you know, there are so many people who participate as instructors, participants, demo, people who give demos of their assistive technology. They all have really, really compelling and, uh, and, and great stories that really bring home the fact that technology can be transformational for people with disabilities, which we saw during COVID, you know, that if you, if you're conducting your entire life remotely and don't have access to the remote connection tools, you're really truly isolated in ways that maybe people um, who are tip more typically able would be able to take advantage of. So I don't know. I just think there are a lot of human interest stories since we're talking to the press. <laughs> so thanks for indulging me. Take it away, Anthony. Alrighty, and Mariela, anything you want to share before we uh, wrap up? today absolutely. absolutely so thank you so much for that Sharon I think it's so important to really highlight the stories behind the work we do and knowing that about Molly just makes me all that more excited to attend her keynote presentation so Jay Elizabeth um, Anthony and Sharon thank you so much for taking the time to do this press this is going to be recorded so we are going to be sharing it far and wide with all of our press friends so that they can write about this incredible event we're putting together. If you took the time to look at all of this and learn more about this, we're so excited to have you be a part of, of Ask this year. One of the things I want to let everyone know, if you're watching this and you have additional questions, you can go ahead and you can email us at accessu, so that is A-C-C-E-S-S-U at nobility, which is K-N-O-W-B, I L I T T Y dot org. So email us at access um, you at nobility.org if you have any questions. And if you have any other questions related to what we do at large at nobility, you can always email us at hello at nobility.org. Um, I would love to open up the space if there are any questions from our attendees in the chat. But otherwise, I think we're going to just go ahead, record this, edit this, and then share it with our press friends. Any closing thoughts, comments from anyone? ACJ is saying no, Elizabeth is saying no, Anthony is saying no, uh, Sharon, any last thoughts or questions? And with that said, if we do not have any additional questions, we'll go ahead and close up the recording. Thank you so much for making the time today. And onward to a more accessible digital feature with access to you. Anyway, bye everybody.